the next day, <clears throat> I woke to the most amazing thing. I felt a peace in me. The peace seemed to be sitting right in my core. I felt solid. It was definitely there. I had to examine myself. I felt so different. And I'd been keeping a small Bible by my bed. And I picked it up to find my Bible opening at Psalm 40. As I read it, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. I was certain that it had been written for me. I left for work and walking along I was aware of a lightness and a sense that I had a secret which was just for me. I was stunned. Something was happening to me. That very night I experienced a vision of a baby coming in and out of the water and later a friend commented that the stress had disappeared from my face. It was as if the Lord was showing me how much he loved me as that week proved to be possibly the most amazing of my life. On the Thursday I was leaving Waitrose following a shopping trip when I got a tap on my shoulder from behind to be surprised to find that it was the elder from the church and I spoke these words to him. I think I found him. He was overjoyed, so much so that he took up the role of my mentor in my new Christian walk. There wasn't a day in two years where he didn't send me a scripture or word of encouragement in an email to greet me each day at work and I was able to learn so much from him. The other remarkable thing that happened that week was that I had been mine in mind to get in touch with a woman that I knew as part of my forgiveness programme, but I had not seen her for around a year. That Friday, I came round a corner in the town during my lunch break to literally bump straight into her. It felt like it was meant, and so I arranged to meet her for lunch the following Tuesday. After I had done so, I had another vision in the night of a pair of hands letting a dove go free. As I write this, I am reminded of the gratitude that exists in my heart for having been found by the one. I was lost but now I am found. His love was so adoring and special. He made me feel like all of this was for me alone. And what is more, he has never left my side since, although latterly the love affair has settled into the reality of life. Jesus nurtured and loved and led me for many years before releasing me into adult, adulthood as a father would his child. I needed a lot of teaching and hand-holding and he showed me in a supernatural way how to proceed. I was being disciplined and one day whilst walking through the churchyard alone with my dog, I had a sensation come over me. It came and went again, and I wasn't sure at first what to think, but for some reason felt to follow this sensation. A bit like a hot and cold game. And this I did. And then I found myself at a grave, looking down onto the stone, I noted the lady's name was Jane. On again I went, following the sensation to another grave, and there again laid a lady by the name of Jane. I picked it up once again, and as I followed, I felt certain we would come to further grave with a lady by the name of Jane, and this proved to be so. As I went to leave the churchyard by the back gate, I was once again beset by the sensation quite suddenly. I stopped to look to my right, and there lay a lady by the name of Jane. I prayed about this and come to believe it to mean that I was being led and disciplined in the right path of walking and listening, but also that Jesus knew me and most importantly, who I am. I took a holiday with a girlfriend a month after my conversion. On our last night, we enjoyed a nice meal at a nice restaurant and later that night during a dream, I could see our dinner table with a glass of water and a glass of wine in front of me, 
just as it had been in the restaurant. As I had my eyes fixed on the table and glasses in the dream, I heard a voice say, John 2-2. I responded by asking if that was John 2-2 as I wanted to be clear, to which the voice said yes. I woke up immediately. It must have been three o'clock in the morning, took my small Bible to the loo and proceeded to look up the chapter. Can you imagine my surprise and joy to find the chapter was entitled Jesus Turns Water Into Wine? I was stunned as I had my eyes fixed on the glasses in my dream, one water and one wine. The verse, Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding, I took to mean that I was going to get married again. On my arrival back home, our elder calmly put me writing, saying that the message was more likely a confirmation that I was now part of the church and a bride of Jesus. I was very happy to accept that, but I'm delighted to be able to say that five years to the exact week, my new husband and I were back in Cyprus on a honeymoon, which was gifted to us. Because you have found him doesn't make you right overnight. I was still in the way of some bad habits and bad decisions. I felt lonely and would often resort to going to the pub to quench that feeling of emptiness. One Friday night I came home from work and went straight to the pub at around half past five and didn't return home until half past one in the morning having danced and chatted the night away. The next morning I felt so bad. Not just because I had a bad head, but I had spent a lot of money and I felt extremely remorseful at my behaviour. As I was praying forgiveness and still in bed, I had a picture of a mug with the word Peter written on it. As I looked at it, I heard the number four in my head. At first I was confused when I came to look at the Bible, as there are two books of Peter. But it seemed Peter 2 only went up to chapter 3, and so I was absolutely astounded to find the scripture in Peter 1, 4, verse 3, saying, For you have spent enough time doing what pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing and detestable idolatry. It was later that I realised this message has some humour attached in it, that it had been delivered on a mug was after that particular dose of discipline that I did take a hold of this part of my life and didn't indulge in this way again. There were times when I went out, but interestingly, I will call them angels, there were certain people that seemed to appear who seemed to make sure I was looked after from then on.